And action. Howard had a question on sleep. And I, I think it's an important one. I've done videos on Reese, Dr. Rick tutorial, reset your clock. And a couple others, I forget what the names are. But the most important thing is there are medicines out there that do help initiate sleep. Like Ambien, Sonata, Lunesta. Kind of expensive, but they're going to be going off patents soon, so that's kind of cool. They'll be generic and cheap, I guess. But here's the thing. They are behaviorally addictive because they work so well to put you into this hypnotic state. Now, the way they work, well, I don't want to get into the details of the way these things work, but it affects the brain and the brain waves. And if you take it at about, well, I go to sleep at like nine. I know that might be early, but that's my sleep time. And I wake up at about five, 4.35 to start my day, answer some messages, and have my tea and meditate. Now, if you can't get to sleep, but you initiate sleep with a pill, as long as you have your comfy pajamas on, your eye pillow or eye mask, you turn the lights down, you quiet down uh, the noise in the house, and you get into your nice comfy king-size bed, then you should be able to take advantage of that pill. The problem is some people will also have a little drink and or watch a little TV and TV is not meant to relax you. TV is meant to have you enamored so that you can keep on watching for the next hour or the next episode. Netflix is nasty. I just discovered that with my daughter and boy, there's no commercial. So you just go from one episode to the next episode. It's, in, it's infinite, it seems like. So really damaging. Uh, DVRs, same thing. You can keep on going from the next one to the next one to the next one. And these shows that you're watching on TV, you can be a vegetable and just watch like this. But then there's the, the directors are good nowadays. They'll keep you kind of guessing. They'll keep you excited to watch the next five minutes and the next five minutes. So I would not watch TV, whether it's a TV show or a comedy special or a frightening movie. I would not do that. I, actually, you're not supposed to even be on your tablets because any kind of light that's blue from a computer screen or a TV screen is meant to stimulate you. It turns off the pineal gland. The pineal gland is important for making melatonin. That's the sleep hormone. And it's the opposite of cortisol, which is the wake hormone. And I know you all hear about cortisol being bad, but you're supposed to have cortisol in the morning. You're supposed to have melatonin at night. And that is it. Now, when you watch TV, when you have a light source at night, when you're in Alaska, you see light, the melatonin is not. It's brought down at night, and then when you're supposed to sleep, and then your brain says, wait a minute, am I supposed to sleep, or am I supposed to stay awake? It doesn't know, but you're, it's easy to, for a lot of us to go ahead and stay awake. I mentioned alcohol before, and uh, some people will not have the option to take Ambien, Sonata, or Lesta, so we'll have a shot of whiskey, and that'll get you kind of a little relaxed. But the thing is, alcohol has this weird effect. It'll get you relaxed, it'll slow down the brain, it'll take all those stressors that you're worried about at 8, 9 o'clock, and just beat them down. But the problem is, so you might get to sleep. Problem is, alcohol will eventually get chewed up by your liver and get digested, and then when there's no more alcohol around, what happens? Well, the same things come back up. So two or three in the morning, you wake up. And with the same exact problems that you were having at nine o'clock when you had your first drink. So it's interruptive. Some people wake up at one o'clock because the alcohol is out of them. And what do they got to do? Take a pill or have another shot. And that's not healthy. So the problem sometimes is that if you do the medications, they'll work, but you have to set up that environment. So Howard, I would always wanna make sure, I don't know all the details, but I would always wanna make sure that you tell your brain this is sleep. And how do you tell your brain it's sleep? Not being exposed to screens, trying to get into comfy pillows. I always try to embrace the five senses. Uh, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. If you can embrace the five senses, to relax, to calm down, and maybe have a relaxation practice. 
You don't have to meditate like me. You can just do a four, seven, eight breath exercise for about five to seven minutes. If you can detach from all the stressors of the day because you're involving yourself in four, seven, eight breathing, see my video, Dr. Rick tutorial four, seven, eight breath exercise, or just join in one of the Oprah Deepak 21 day meditation challenges. I've got a lot of their CDs. Oh, uh, Deepak taught me, but uh, if you can get a mindful practice at night, it'll set the brain up for calming down. When the brain is calmed down, when all the five senses are also supporting calming down, then usually sleep can be adjusted. Sleep can be entertained. Sleep can be entered. Then the brain will actually go from its... The brain goes through several different stages of sleep to get to brain rest. Now, it usually takes six cycles of REM, and usually you'll have your brain go from fast waves to slow waves to really slow waves, and then REM sleep. And then I'll come back out and go back down. Come back out, come back down. So that cycle kind of thing that happens with the brain, if it gets six cycles per night, cool. Usually in the morning, you'll be totally refreshed, ready to go. You won't even need an alarm clock. You won't need to hit your snooze button. You'll be ready. You won't fade in the daytime. Now that's dependent on a couple other things, which we'll talk about right now. In the morning, you have to train your brain to wake up at the same time. Weekends, days off. You usually have to do this thing repetitively for about 21 days straight, I'd say. So if you want to reset your circadian rhythm, you have a nighttime, a designated time, weekends also, and uh, embrace the five senses. You also, no alcohol, by the way, and I'd probably try to get away from the medicines. There's things that'll initiate even better than medicines, like melatonin, 5-HTP. Sometimes if you use ashwagandha at night, magnesium. I like Yarrow brand, uh, Magmind. Those things will help get the brain to kind of fade down. And then uh, realizing that, you know, even if you wake up, okay, don't get too stimulated. Don't look up your screen. Maybe do some breath exercises, empty your bladder if you have to. Try not to be too engaging. Don't turn on the brain too much. Breath exercise, and maybe I like some uh, melatonin spray. I use a melatonin spray under the tongue. That way you don't have to take any water because you know when you take water for a pill, you'll pee it out eventually, so you'll have to get up again. Under the tongue spray, perfect. So if you do that kind of routine, and then you wake up in the morning, same time every day, set your day you can do some coffee if you have to i wouldn't do any uh, energy drinks because there's sugar in there it makes you crash i just do coffee espresso if you have issues with reflux uh, you don't have to have a big cup of coffee and then you go on your day you also have to be taking breakfast in but mostly protein because taking mostly carbs will drop down because of the insulin level your energy level taking more protein will help you stay awake and not too big of a meal same thing with the uh, lunchtime, high protein or mostly protein. And then we get to dinner time when you, go, you can take advantage of a healthy carb, healthy fat meal, dominant meal. Uh, you should always have a mix of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, but nighttime is high carbohydrate, daytime proteins. Uh, satiety is important, but we're not going to talk about that. Exercise is important too. If you exercise at night because that's the only time you can exercise, I say no. You got to exercise in the daytime because exercise also gives you this little endorphin rush. It makes you feel high. It makes you feel good. And you have the pump that occurs if you exercise properly. And usually if your muscles get full, within about two hours, your muscles would deflate if done properly. And you only have to go pee. So if you, have, if you time it the wrong way, you'll have your pump at night. You'll have to go pee at like two or three in the morning. Because what do most people do when they exercise? They drink water. So I would usually try to push the exercise for the morning. And what does exercise do? It wakes you up. And then you turn on the music. You turn on the five senses to get going in the morning. Uh, that's the best time. Even though it's a little bit awkward, I'd say that would be the best time if you want to reset this thing. 21 days seems to be the amount of time that you need to uh, have a track in the mind that's burned have a routine established. So that's why I usually say 21 days, but you can, do, you can go more, 30 days, if you want to just get this thing down. I always use the analogy of trying to paint, train a puppy. If, you train a, if one person trains a puppy to go outside, eat their snack, 
go outside in the morning, do their business on the grass at 7 a.m., and come back inside, get the reward, maybe again at 7 p.m., and the puppy knows what to do. The puppy's not waking you up every five minutes at night saying, I, I think I gotta go, let's go outside. So if the puppy gets, though, several different people that say, let's go out at 7 a.m., let's go out again at 3 a.m., let's go out at 2 a.m., let's go out at 5, the puppy doesn't know when to go. And if the puppy doesn't know when to go outside to poop, the puppy is gonna poop inside. It doesn't know, it's confused. Same thing with the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm of the brain has to match up with the circadian rhythm of the gut. If both of them are on track, meaning it's, it knows, the brain knows when to wake, brain, the stomach knows when to eat, stomach knows when to eat its second meal, stomach knows when to eat its third meal, brain knows when to go to sleep at night, you'll have these guys working in sync. It'll be easier to get this thing down. If you're used to taking medicines, they're very powerful. It's gonna be hard to wean off the medicines, but it's worth it because in the end, you won't need to have that extra cup of coffee in the morning. You'll be able to problem solve faster. You'll be able to get away from medicines, maybe even have a better night, better sex, better testosterone level. So all these things are the, the, the landfall or the avalanche of positive things that can happen when the body gets into its circadian rhythm.